Hello, welcome to episode 22 of Descent into Avernus, our Venture Adventures game. We're definitely in hell now, as we just had a player character death at the hands of some lowly, weak Hezros. Just so weak and <laughs> and don't hit very hard. It was, right. it was it was more uh Brian's fault though, uh in my opinion. Jarvis did not put Kairos to sleep by accident. What would a level one cure wounds really have done? I probably still would have gone down. That's maybe. I could have run. You could have run. Yeah. We're talking about a lot of potential I could have, but eh, you know what I'm gonna say? That's not what my char character would do, Jay. There you go. There you go. That's that's <laughs> the way to do it. Uh Let's see. Let me turn on some ambiance music. Uh, All right. I can't name Brian's character yet because I have no idea what its name is. Correct. Uh, so to recap what happened last week, um, the Bean Squad was doing a favor for Chuck and Clonk, the two Kenku who work for Mad Maggie, working on a infernal machine and it's broken and they needed some Hezru spikes to put on a gear in the infernal machine and uh, they located some Hezru demons and fought them and it took a very long time that encounter lasted longer than I thought it would but we made it and the spikes were taken uh, and once they were taken the group decided that they didn't want to leave. They wanted to kill the Hezros. And uh, Jarvis, our wizard, put to sleep someone on his own crew. He's the most sleep-happy wizard I've ever seen. Especially at level 7. And but it worked. It's, it's the second time it actually worked. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But it's just I've never seen it used so often. <laughs> and uh, I'm indifferent to its use, of course. It makes me laugh. So actually, I'm maybe not indifferent. Uh, and Kairos, our tiefling paladin of horror, took some, some claw strikes and bites, went down, and was finished off by one of the Hezru, and was offered a deal by a certain devil to be resurrected in exchange for, well, we didn't even get that far. Because he said no. So we're looking for... Reasons that the, only the dice I know said no. Because I never acted out that part of his backstory. He said no to the, to the demon that offered him a deal. <laughs> It's a devil. We're gonna we're gonna fix devil. you on this, Brian. I read. I I did my homework, <laughs> and I'm still getting it wrong. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fix this. Uh, I swear I read the book. <laughs> so the gang pulled Kairos's body onto their machines that they went out into the wastes of Avernus on, and headed back to Fort Knucklebone, where uh, they're gonna dispose of the body and possibly look for another member for their team and that's where we left off with uh, Mad Maggie saying to you guys hell I'm not gonna put that body into that damn pyramid cause I'm destroying that pyramid if you don't remember our, our last conversation Kairos was really adamant about wanting to keep this pyramid here and I, I i think i would honestly say that i barely that might have been his i dying barely wish. know you guys i don't care about you guys other than what you can offer me and you're asking for a favor for me that i have no interest in completing or what if we decorated the pyramid no just no <laughs> We can burn his body, or just leave it for the Sturges to work on, or... J just curious, could... Uh, I forgot his name. The Flesh Golem that follows her around. Mickey. Mickey. Could you make a Mickey out of him? Oh, we can keep his pieces around to be used for another Flesh Golem in the, in the 
sad case if Mickey meets his demise. I mean, he might enjoy that. He already had the baby. He was already going that direction. Uh, that is the one thing I am disappointed about were those recently acquired baby arm horns. I guess they're just yeah. straight baby arms, actually. <laughs> Not really horns, unless the little fingers made little pokey horn type things, or did that. Uh, well, so uh, what, what do you want to do with the body? I, you guys don't seem to care very much. I, I'm up for either burning it or making a flesh golem out of it, because he might enjoy that. I don't know. Jerry, what do you think? Um, Maggie, can you just make an exception? Just put him in the pyramid, please. No, Jerry. I can't do that, Jerry. Well, if you put him in the pyramid, those those beautiful baby arms that, that you just gave him would forever rest in this tomb within this pyramid. Your, your precious work would always be there. And maybe it'll grow a new body with I'm baby arms. I'm getting really close to allowing the red caps to have their way with his body. Well, we can't have that. So, I guess we'll we'll go with the burning of the body. Does anybody uh, say any last words? Kairos? Um, are we doing this right now? Are we burning them right here? Take them outside? Are we outside? I don't know where we are. Yeah, burn you're, in you're just outside. Uh, we can burn them on the pyramid. That will do. I think yes. that fits everybody's needs. So, you walk over to the pyramid and she conjures a sickly, disgusting looking Big Bigby's hand, picks up the corpse, says to you guys, any last words? I'd oh. like to say a few, a few words for Kairos. She just has the corpse in this massive hand, spectral hand. Yeah. <laughs> As we lay Kairos to rest, uh, may we always remember how much he loved that shield that he got that one time. Just, that was Kairos to a T. He loved, he loved cool weapons. He, he lived life on the edge. And ultimately, that's how he died. Living on the edge. That's it. Anyone else? He was the best of us, and he was taken too soon. He was really bad at finding things. Okay, well, good, good try, everyone. Uh, she, the hand floats up and goes to the top of the pyramid and just kind of... Uh, smushes the body on top of the point so it stays there and then the hand goes away and a fireball just goes whoo, right on the point and uh, catches the body on fire and it is on fire smoking and doing what you requested I like to think that uh, you stand there watching the body burn, but because he's a tiefling, which are naturally resistant to fire, it takes like a like a long it, time. It does. It yeah. <laughs> Not bad. It's, it's just, just gonna smolder really for for, for, for like days. <laughs> yeah. Like and just the, it's the worst like insta log you put in your fireplace that just never goes out. So tieflings make good charcoal. That, apparently it's what yes. you're learning right now but you definitely reach that point where all three of you are standing there and someone has to be like so we go now. there's <laughs> yeah. no clear ending yeah like a good it's like... all like 20 minutes later i'm like all right <laughs> jarvis jarvis is a last ditch effort to convince this woman to keep this pyramid is gonna cast minor oh, illusion God. and make a floating look like a floating spectral of kairos's body leave his body and just float into the pyramid. You, I don't think you can make one that big. 
I can make it five feet. It'll be close enough. So you make a mini Kairos and you do that. Let me pull up a night hack stats. <clears throat> Mad Maggie. Mad Maggie, Mad Maggie, Maggie, Mad Maggie. And if she does a spell save DC, it's against uh, 15. For what? It, it says minor... if a creature uses its action to examine the sound or image, the creature can determine that it is illusion with a successful intelligence ch investigation check against your spell save DC. Sure, Gary. I'm not going to try to figure out what her passive insight is, but... Yeah, that she, she realizes what it is. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna give up. <laughs> and she is going to make a. All right. She's gonna just go up to you, Gary, when you do that, and she's just gonna put her hand up to your face. And just kind of go with her finger. And it's going to hit you with a 25. <laughs> and cuts through your cheek all the way. And does 10 points of slashing damage to you. Shit. I'm bleeding right now. Yeah, you have a hole in your cheek. <laughs> I was very hurt from before. And that she was says, really hurt. You need to learn when to quit. It was worth the effort. Done. She walks away. Uh, wait. Wait, Mag Maggie. Wait. What? You said you might know somebody who would want to go on an adventure? Uh, yeah, Chuck and Clonk brought someone in a few days ago was pretty screwed up but uh has been recovering and uh being screwed up how i don't really know you'd have to ask chuck and clonk but um helped out chuck and clonk and uh so therefore i am not uh i do not own this individual so uh believe his name is Brack or Drac Frack something definitely a rack in there though definitely a rack uh, and um, yeah why don't I take you to them you don't you're not opposed to slimy individuals are you I mean like dishonest or physically slimy are you opposed to either? You're in hell after all. Not not opposed. No. Oh, Just no. curious. Well, I'll uh, take you to him. And she takes you to the interior of Fort Knucklebone. In between the little fingers, the rock fingers that this outcropping resembles. And the palm? <laughs> takes you into the palm. The... the the fourth metatarsal? I don't know. I'm not going to try to uh, do that. Um, and takes you past a lot of cages in jail cells in which there are various creatures, red caps, um, oozes under some sort of magical containment. And uh, you get to an open jail cell. What do you see, Brian? Brian. All right, I got some I got some box text for you guys. Okay. Um, so a lean figure stands before you. He's about five foot six, back straight and stiff, belying military experience. Dressed only in a pair of ragged shorts. He's shoeless, one-horned tiefling eyes each one of you. I'm, I'm tasting P 
piercy blue gaze that grazes the surface of your mind, giving you a distinctly unsettling feeling, as if fingers were lightly caressing your brain. His figure betrays one that once boasted strength, but is now lean, wiry cords of muscle. Years of enduring endless struggle has left his red skin a dull, lifeless color, almost more gray than red, with the skin stretched taut over his skeleton, exposing his rib cage. As he starts to reach a hand out through the cage, uh, stopping at each one of you with his eyes, seeing a possibly the first humanoids he's seen in quite a while, non-hellish folk he instinctively reaches out a hand and uh, those of you who are more perceptive notice that coating his entire skin is an oily substance um, like his hands his arms, his chest, everywhere he pulls back and just stands staring at each other and just says greetings, I'm Drac Maggie, who have you brought me? that's what it was, Drac I knew it was a rack, something. That was one spell, Drac. Drac, I'm gonna, let me guess here, Drac, I'm gonna take a gander uh, at spelling your name. I believe it's D-R-A-K. H-K. You can spell it however you'd like. It's just what the voices call me. Well, and who are these voices? Yeah. Couldn't tell you. I could probably and tell you if you let me in there. <clears throat> Are they trying to get you to buy into some sort of reverse orphanage? <laughs> uh, no, um, but maybe, maybe this will. And he he just waves his hand, and just a weird undulating black mask. You Jarvis recognized immediately. He's casting minor illusion. Just a tiny illusion in his hand of a strange amorphous blob-like thing but as he's casting it two things happen um the tiefling's horns like i said he only has one and it has a crack all the way down the center and in the crack like there's a there's a iridescent stone on a chain that's kind of like wrapped around the horn and it's just sitting there the other one is is broken off almost like it's crumbled from age um down to a nub when he casts it you can see for just a flash, just a moment, you see the other horn appear, and right on the edge of your hearing, only those closest to him can hear these tiny, tiny whispers. You can't make out a single thing they're saying, um, but it's multiple voices all coming at once, um, and then it's gone. Lasts the briefest second, um, but whoever's standing closest to him gets the slightest inkling of what he means by voices. Oh man, I hate secrets. I love secrets, but I love figuring out secrets too. Uh, so this is Drac. Uh, Drac, you asked me what I had brought to you. These are some adventurers who came down here to look into the floating city out there. And, uh, yeah, they lost somebody, and they don't... Maybe they're in shock or something. It's really quite disappointing for me that they are not distraught. And, uh, quite frankly, it's not adding to a... Maggie, there's there's no right way to grieve. No, there is. In my... From my taste, <laughs> I like the emotional weeping and 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 depression that comes along with it that's what i the taste of that is just so good and that's my favorite kind of grieving and none of you are not yet it's too displaying soon playing any of that and by the time you possibly show it uh, you'll likely be out there messing about with some more demons or whatever. Anyways, it's not... It's just <laughs> me. And uh, it's my disappointment. So, uh, Drac... Uh, what do you guys... First of all, what do you guys think about Drac 
Drac, what do you think of them? We'll start with Drac. Are they capable? Are you capable? <clears throat> it... um, I like to think so. Yeah, last encounter notwithstanding, we usually handle ourselves pretty well. The question is, are you capable? You look like shit. That's fair. <clears throat> yeah, I'm capable. And I guess you're still alive, so that makes you capable enough. So what happened to you? Your body looks like it's just decaying. Your body yeah. looks like when I get stabbed with a big spike from one of those spike devils, and then it like heals over. You look like one of my scabs. Yeah, that that kind of happened a few hundred times, sort of. Uh, I I came to hell. Whew, I don't know how long it was. Is that Elturel in the sky? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, it looked familiar. I haven't seen it in a very long time. I came with Zeriel. Uh, Whoa, so you know was. Lulu? Who? Lulu? Oh, well, I know of Lulu. Oh, okay. Where is Lulu? Lulu! Get get over here! Lulu, <laughs> I believe Lulu went back, <laughs> is hanging out with Chuck and Clonk. She's taking a liking to them. Uh, Aw, it's cute. You gotta... Lulu's here and alive. Very yeah. much so. And he just nods. Uh, we're we're kind of working with her. Interesting. Uh, Can't tell if that's a plus or a minus in that yeah in that brain uh, of yours. Would you be for or against working with Lulu? Depends. What's happened between? The last time I saw her now. She's still a good person. She's still Lulu. In all of her Lulu-ness. That's good. A little bit of memory <clears throat> problems, but she's very sweet. Memory problems. Interesting. Yeah, it is very interesting. Uh, it's very, very interesting. And... Uh, was not able to fix <laughs> those things as much as I would have liked. Maggie, please just like put away your erection for for tears and for for juicy memories, okay? Trying to get to know our new teammate here. I don't have an erection. Mm, it was metaphorical. I do not have a Metaphorical erection. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> she, she just starts to ponder about a metaphorical erection. <laughs> um, uh, she goes, well, I'll leave you to it. Uh, if you need to find someone else, Is... let me know. Is there a reason he's in a cage? No, he's got the door open. I just put him in oh, there. Oh, okay. I, don't... I didn't know if it was locked or what was So, going. while we're talking to this guy, um, I'm going to cast message to Rollercoast. Um, and I'm going to basically start a conversation. Isn't he... He mentioned he came with, with Serial. Aren't aren't we here to kill Zeriel? Don't you think this might be a yeah, conflict of interest? Zeriel, can I speak to them? Can I speak to you, Jarvis? Um, I was only, you can't I was hear only this, talking yeah. to Mel. Okay, yeah, never mind. can hear me right now. Um, are we? We've acquired a lot of information since then. I think we should get Lulu. Bring Lulu over here. It's a good see idea. See what she has to say. Maybe she knows Drac. Drac knows of her. Maybe she knows of Drac. It's a good idea. Uh, Drac, would you like to come to our little camp site and come talk to Lulu and see if you want to 
maybe join us on some adventures. We've got some business to attend out in the wastes of hell, and it's got to be better than hanging out here. I would agree. I've only been here for a few days. I only just got my legs back under me. Uh, kind of itching to move along, though I don't particularly know where to. Uh, but yes, I would I would certainly like to speak with Lulu. Well so, then, let's go to Lulu. So you head out of the inner area of Fort Knucklebone towards the outer circle where all the infernal machines and red caps are and where Chuck and Clonk are working on a broken working on putting the Hezra spikes back into the broken machine and Lulu is handing them wrenches just black infernal iron wrenches and every time she does she says ow 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 like it's burning her uh but still is handing them uh, the the tools and uh, is not paying attention to you guys as you approach. Hey, Lulu, we want you to meet someone. Oh, I love meeting people. She turns... This is Drac. Drac, nice to meet you. You're alive. I am you alive. Like that. You're alive. Kinda. <laughs> it's debatable. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm Drac, formerly of the Titan Brigade, Hellriders. And as he says, Hellriders, he spits on the ground. Oh. <clears throat> I, I saw you from afar a lifetime ago. Sounds familiar, Titan Brigade, but I don't remember a Drac. Uh, sorry. Am I supposed to remember That's... you? No, not at all. Uh, I was just, just a soldier. <clears throat> but I saw you alongside Zariel. What did you see? You st was I like, what was I doing? It was the middle of battle. I, I, I was fighting, I assume, next to Zariel, until everybody, you know, ran. Yeah, we did. We did kind of remember being next to Zariel. I wasn't near you. Uh, Titan Brigade was fighting on the left flank. Wasn't Zeriel on you? Yeah, I kind of remember that too. Jerry. The last I saw, uh, the Hellriders were running. <clears throat> okay. Well, nice to meet you. So, Lulu. Um... You really don't remember, do you, Lulu? No. I have memory problems. That's what I'm told. Hmm. Lulu, Drac here is uh, thinking about joining our little squad of beans. Did you tell him what we need to do with the sword? Not yet. I haven't gotten that far. Um, You're looking for a sword and... Beans? Zer, Zer, we have beans. We we like beans. Oh, you have beans. Um, you guys got you. You have beans here. We don't have Not, as many beans as we used to. Yeah. No, we're we're this running is all low. All we have left, and I shake my my eight beans. Yeah, we're running low on edible beans. I got a. I, I found some gold a little bit ago. I I've eaten beans and. Or I could give you some food alone. if you want food. Uh, Maggie sent me up with some rations, but to be honest, they taste terrible. I've they got not work. hell rations. They're they, still rations, but they're not from hell. They no, still I'll taste take, bad. Yeah, I, I'd love to, to eat some food. That'd be... That's the damn nicest thing anyone said in a long time. <clears throat> really, oh. it's anything anyone said for a long time. Other than the voices. Um... Uh. I Where have you been this whole time? I give him some of the rations out of Jarvis's, or not Jarvis, out of Kairos's stack of rations. Oh, neat. How many rations did you give me? Uh, how many did you have? Let's see. And I'll answer you, Jerry, in just a moment. You After just booking. put dried meat snacks 
You I don't have a no, number. No, there's here. rations in the list. Well, I deleted his shoes. Rations, oh, one day times 23. <laughs> no, I'll give you three days. rations. Sweet. I'll take it. Um, and uh, he regards you silently for a moment, Jerry. And then uh, he just says, let me show you. And let me check this feature real quick. Oh, I don't even have to touch you. I just have to see you. As you're looking into his eyes, um, you kind of get a glimpse into his mind as a telepathic link forms between the two of you. And... Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. It's not like your, uh, it's not like your infomercial calls at all. It's, <laughs> you, you find yourself in like a, in like a prote somewhat protected bubble in just a massive river of chaotic energy just swirling about you hear voices now but there's too many to make out actual words that are that are being said and and you and and drac are in this like s somewhat protected bubble just with all of this chaotic energy swirling around you um and he just telepathically to you says i was in in this for hundreds of years it felt like and then you're did back you get to, to did you get to sleep uh, no, and we we maintain a telepathic link right now for ten minutes. Um, so I answer all of this telepathically. I say no, no sleep, no sleep. Only voices before that. How did you end up there? I was cast into a pit, a, a abyssal pit, after being captured after the battle. The Titan Brigade. We don't flee. You see, and they were slaughtered. All my brothers and sisters. And <clears throat> so you made I was it captured. Out, okay. I didn't think I was, but I woke up, and a ritual was being performed on me, and it was fire and pain, and then I had horns, I didn't have horns before, uh, and then I think they thought I was dead, and they cast me into a bottomless pit, I fell for an eternity, and something, I don't know how to describe it, ate me, absorbed me. And eventually I learned how to make this bubble. And I got out. This wasn't always there. I was in that. And he just waves his arm. The, the just mindless, chaotic energy that's swirling around. I floated in that. And you can see his like jaws tensing up and clear oh, signs of like visible stress. Um, how did you end up in Fort Knucklebone? Well, I was wandering hell and... I ran across Chuck and Clunk. They were Got being harried by some imps, and I helped them, and they brought me back here, and that was three days ago. I've been on my own two feet for... Oh, I've slept six or seven times. There's no sun down here. I don't know days. Well, it's going to be good to have someone who knows the ropes down here and <laughs> these parts, so... I doubt I know much more than you, but we'll, we shall find out, shall we? You are a rather cheery person, aren't you? <clears throat> yeah, I'm kind of down. I'm, not, I'm still kind of processing my buddy's death, so we'll see. Ah, uh, right. Uh, Drac, are you? I, I mean, you were part of the Hell Riders, so I'm assuming you're good in combat situations. You're not afraid to uh, take something on if necessary. No, not at all, though I find my hands can't hold a sword like they used to. I found other ways to cope. Are you a magic user like Jarvis? Maybe you can sh share spells in your books. Mm -hmm. You keep yours in a book? I do. Where do you keep yours? Uh, it's less about keeping them and more about controlled releases of insanely chaotic energy. Is that not how it goes for you i'm so excited and i would know about sorcerers, sorcerers how does Jar yeah lulu goes jarvis he doesn't even have to s study or anything he just he just does magic that's pretty cool huh he doesn't have to like learn or take time and do all that stuff let me ask you this drac if we had a magical item that needed to be identified could you do it no Oh, God damn it. <laughs> the search for the very on brand pearl, the identified pearl <laughs> continues. 
We lost the one person who could identify things in this party. <laughs> we thought we lost the one person that could identify things in this as party. As far as I know, we lost the one person that could identify things in this party. Okay? Uh, he was doing it a lot better than you were. I mean, I, I could try. I, I haven't had much experience. I woke up with this and points to the stone. Uh, and that's... That's all I've ever had in terms of things that are magical. I'm gonna go check and see if uh, Chunka and Clunker are done with our vehicle. Jerry, it's don't call vehicle. him Chunka. It's Chucka. My ear's a little bit heavy. Jerry, don't <laughs> say that to, to Chucka. He may take offense to that. <laughs> He's a bird. Ah, uh, come on, I kid, I kid, Chucka. You so you walk over to Chucka, and Chucka's just head in the engine of of the machine. Yeah, is that thing ready yet? Uh, Mad Maggie wants it done soon. Okay, cool. Why? <laughs> Our, Are we waiting Our, for anything in particular, or should we... No, our Maggie? machine is fine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Your machine, machine is our... fine! Chuka we can... Says. We... Anyway. We need to sleep before we do anything else. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I still can't tell like, what time it is. Yeah, I look like shit, Jarvis. I don't know how you guys look like look. shit. And as you know, near the end, you realized like he started not being able to cast spells anymore. So Lulu says to you again, Jarvis. Jarvis, isn't that cool that he doesn't have to study? Yeah, He's... I've heard about. I've heard about those kind of people. You're a sorcerer, aren't you? Sure, if that's what it's called. That's what they're called on the material plane, but we're not on the material plane anymore. To be fair, I didn't have to study at all for any of the things I can do either. Jarvis, you're the only I... one who has to study and, like, do work for magic? <laughs> Trust me, friend. Oh? You don't want to learn magic the way I learned magic. I, I love I, I'm man, in pain. I, I think I'm really gonna like you on this team, Drac. Everything you say is so ominous. <laughs> Just love it. Um Alright, let's all get some shut eye. Okay. Uh let's go back to our original sleeping spot and sleep there. Yeah. Near our machine, I'm assuming. Near our yeah. vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> our uh <laughs> Is Chunka and Clonk going to be joining us on this adventure for the sword? Who are you asking? You, Lulu. Do you know? No, I think they're going to keep working for Maggie because they can come back to the fort and we might not be able to come to the fort if we all die. Oh, yeah. boy. You're not wrong. Okay, let's go, Nine Nights. And let's get some enemies. You guys have your long rest, Jerry, just as you're going to sleep. You no. hear a ringing no. in your head. And it's not like not a telephone here. ring. Not it's just here. like a... Not here. It just keeps here. going. And it's, uh, if you keep saying not here, it just keeps going. What do you do? Uh, I, uh, I go get some, like, dirt, and I try to plug up my ears. That kind of helps the rustling of the... the, the rocks and the dirt kind of just drum, drums it out and actually you can fall asleep that way uh, nice. when you wake up in the morning you're fine you all get a long rest uh, you have dirt in your ears and the ringing has stopped um, oh before I go to sleep Jarvis you spends three hours doing you know what this new guy doesn't know doesn't need to read study for mm -hmm. but I learned. Why don't you do it though? I'm rusted up. Start copying over so a stand, spell into my I spell stand book. A weird distance away, watching you do it, like, like maybe like eight feet. Do like I see him enough. watching me? Of like, course, yeah. yeah. No, I'm not high. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm I'm standing nice. very still, and I'm just like staring at you, doing wizard stuff because I've never seen it. <laughs> That's all. Okay. 
Rollercoaster, who uh, taught you to chew with your mouth closed? I've never seen a cat chew with their mouth closed. It's, uh, from being in taverns, people would get very perturbed oh, if that's... I ate like most of my brethren. That makes sense. So while Drac is, while, while I'm doing this and while Drac's, um, watching me, I kind of just start messaging him. Um, can I help you? Hmm. Oh. Hello. You can do I, this too? Yeah. Can you not? Mm, this feels different. Mm. And then I forge my telepathic link with you, and it is different. It feels oppressive and much more invasive and much more, not permanent, but lasting, because it lasts for ten minutes as opposed to the quick message. Um, and as that snaps into place, I'm like... That's what mine feels like. Hmm. I see. What other tricks do you have up your sleeve? What other tricks do you have? <laughs> uh, Sorry, I don't know why. <laughs> those are very good voice tapes. You should do that <laughs> all the time. Um, but he responds and he just says, uh, Do you want me to sh It hurts. Do you want me to sh show you? Do you want that? Does How much does it hurt? How much can your mind take? 11 hit points worth. <laughs> you look very tired. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> your mind feels exhausted. You should probably do that in the morning. Okay, we'll try this later. Live your life, I suppose. I'll go <clears> back <throat> to... Uh, how do you How do you learn how to do magic? It, you, know, you see that I you know, have to copy others' work and learn and, and study. As I described to Jerry, when I form that telepathic link, you kind of have that, that mind's eye vision of, of the sea of chaotic energy, and I just say, I release some of this, and the bubble kind of wavers for a second as some of the like dark swirl of energy like streaks into him, and in the real world, uh, you see like magical energy gather as if you were to cast a spell then, um, and he releases just... Uh, uh, he releases it as prestidigitation. He just makes a spark in the air. Um, but it's unlike any sort of magic casting that you would be familiar with. It's pretty sweet. It's, uh... It's something. <clears throat> Didn't exactly ask for it. Hmm. But does it hurt? Every time. Ugh. Sorry. Mm. Life's but pain. At least it stays with you. I have to keep this thing everywhere I go. Hmm. Interesting. Is that well, it? I'm telling this person that I just met this. <laughs> I don't have any idea. Um, <laughs> that was stupid. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go back to copying my spell. So you all get your long rest. And wake up the same looking landscape before you that you went to sleep with and it doesn't you get your long rest but it just doesn't feel as good as it used to feel you know waking up going to sleep when the sun's gone and then waking up when the sun's just coming out uh, and I think I've told you this before but uh, you think it may be a little harder to get a full long rest out on the plains of Avernus. So, uh, you guys want to head to where Lulu had said she saw? Where she thought? Yeah, correct. <laughs> where she was... thinks the sword might be. And then uh, there is something else out there. Was it that Maggie wanted us to take care of? Notes check. I also, Notes yep, check. that's what I'm doing. <laughs> there was a also, person out there. A person. Or not a person. A devil. A devil. I also, um, I, before we go anywhere, I turn to roller coast, um, and I ask, I show him the scroll for mass healing word. Um, I cannot read it, so I ask him if he can. There's a bunch of god mumbo jumbo in it. It's really boring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
not a future televangelist. No. Uh, Rollercoast. Testing. Rollercoast. Oh, sorry. Harumon. There you go. Uh, you My. Got a... Sorry, go ahead. You got a spell scroll. Okay, I can't. It's a third level spell, right? Am I asking uh, the word? Let me yes. check. Okay. Yes, yeah. it's an evocation third level. Yeah, can't do anything with it yet. Keep it though. Um. Yeah. yeah no, absolutely. No. Those those scrolls. That's that's your magic. That's how you cast it. No, no, no. I have my own magic, but scrolls are just helpful, so I don't have to expend my own. Do you think you... it would be worth? Um... Some other scrolls. I do not. I do, but hold on. Um. Rollercoast, do you think it would be worth maybe trading for Maggie for a scroll I can indefinitely copy? Or do you think this is something that would... I, I have I can't read it. I assume you can at least understand it a little bit, or... Yeah, I just feel like I haven't quite gotten there yet. Like, this is just above and beyond my ability. But if I keep learning right. and growing in right. the ways that... It, yeah, in the ways that I have been, then, uh... Eventually, I may be able to do something with this. You want to hold on to it for a little while? Um, sure. All right. I mean, if we were gonna trade it for anything, I think it should be a pearl. To be honest with that's, you. That's well. That's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna ask if and see. Like, if you mind letting this go, since it's something that you could use. Um, I would be okay with a pearl personally. You better okay. ask the rest of the party. Do you want to go try to trade it in for a pearl? I do. Do you go up to, uh, you find Mickey, which is the easiest way to find Mad Maggie, uh, and he's a massive uh, lighthouse to find. Uh, and you find Mad Maggie. She's currently sewing a bag of some kind. Uh, and she says, Oh, my favorite member of the Bean Squad. Shit. <laughs> She hates me now. Hey, sorry about earlier. Um, I was, you know, that was my way of no. Still you're not. What do you want? And... No, really. I. What it's... do you want? So, remember how you were telling me that you had a pearl, sure. and I need one, and yep. it, it would cost me something. Um, yes. Well, I have this this scroll. Um, what kind I of a scroll? I can't use it. Um, I assume Rollercoaster were you at least able to tell me what it what it did or what it was called? Uh, I don't know if okay. I could get that far. Gee. Yeah, you, you can see that it's divine magic and that it's masculine word. Okay, yeah. cool. So then I do tell her I was like I I can't read it, but this is what I believe it is, and I I show her the scroll. Oh, I have no use for this. I have my own. Uh, practicers of divine magic that can already do this and uh, the most I can offer you is some sort of first level spell scroll but you said you wanted a pearl I really need a pearl well that puts you at a disadvantage in this negotiation now doesn't is, it is there anything that, that I could trade for you in addition to this for a pearl that, that something or maybe do something for you that would appeal to your interest? Do you have any magic items on you? Uh, we... Is Rollercoast with me still? No, it's just you. Um, how far away are you, Rollercoast? I'm back at camp. I'd say more than 120 feet or whatever you need for message. Okay. Um, we might have something. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. I, I asked what you have, nothing. Jarvis. Well, um, mm, I technically know what Kairos had, and that's what I was going for. But um, I want something from you. I don't think I have anything. I'm looking. Do you have any? Rings, any, <laughs> any, Do you have any wands, souls? Any... I don't have anything. You have the a only wand. thing I have. I'm not giving up that wand, actually. 
The magic plus gonna... one might be worth it. Oh, she didn't roll very well. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come back. For the okay. Sake of everyone's time. That ever elusive pearl. I don't want this damn pearl. You you go back to camp and what do you do? Um, I'm gonna ask if we had. I'm gonna ask Rollercoaster since he has the stuff from Kairos's body. Um, so I'm trying to get that pearl and this wasn't enough. Do we have anything that we can't use? Uh, I've got my ring that's completely useless to me. My magic ring. Would you be willing to give that up? Yes. Nah. Is she going to be mad at us that it does bad things? Who are you I'm sure she'll be able to figure it out Doesn't real she just quick? Want a magical I'll, be on, I'll, be, I'll be honest with her, I guess. She and, told you uh, she wanted something from Jarvis. Oh, you know what? Actually, technically, I do on my possession have something that I didn't identify yet. Um, where's my highlighted notes? Technically, it would be coming from me. I have... Everything on your person hasn't been identified yet? You can't identify yeah, I know. Anything. I have... I have... Oh, no. The bracers. I think Kairos had them. <laughs> Jerry's wearing the bracers. Huh? Yeah. Jerry is wearing the bracers. Uh, one other They're thing that I had on sweet. me that we didn't identify yet, and I can't find They up my armor class two points. Yeah. Can't use a shield, though. I wasn't really using a shield that often. So. That's true. And now you don't need to. Yeah. Same thing as wearing a shield. I can't use a shield whenever I rage, so... Would I have an idea how much my... Um, I know I got it as a gift, but would I have any idea how much my wand of magic missiles is worth? In like on the material table. plane? Yeah. Oh. Silly Gary, still asking what things are worth on the material plane, like it matters. No, I'm just trying to get an idea of a thousand if it's where it is in relation to a thousand GP, because I know how much a crystal ball is worth. Not close to a thousand. Under. Yes much under okay um i'm gonna see if she will take um that in its with with the scroll take one go back to her and ask her the magic my wand of magic missile um and the scroll for the crystal ball the okay. pearl not a crystal. the pearl sorry other wrong wrong campaign Fair enough. I stole one of those in my other campaign. Fair enough. Uh, you return to Maggie, and uh, she's still working on this bag of some uh, kind. And uh, you you notice now going in there that the thread she's using, it it's a needle and thread, and the thread coming off the needle looks like normal thread, but as it leaves her hand, it's kind of goes into an ethereal nothingness and kind of enters something in the middle of the air but it just disappears fades away um and she says to you well did you return with something of yours it is mine i didn't want to give it up but i really really need that pearl make and a, take make a persuasion check Woo! hot dog Nat one. She rolled a nat twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Um. <laughs> I thought that was like a rage quit. <laughs> oh my! Uh, I participate in this thing called Ohm Hour, where my power gets shut off at eight, and I just have to override it. Uh. So. She says. I don't feel like you're so distraught over this wand. I mean, I really 
am distraughto for it though. I wasn't trying to lie. I um, just am not convinced of why. <laughs> so you want to trade me this scroll and this wand of w looks like magic missile? Yes, yes it is. I use it all the time. <sighs> Tell me but something. I re my party is really upset that I can't identify objects right now. Tell me, I need something more, and it has to be from you. So you tell me something that will just tickle me, and some secret, some embarrassing story, or something you wouldn't ever tell anyone. Just tell me something that I can just taste. <laughs> You need to give her a metaphorical well, erection. Well, pretty much. What if I told you? What if I told you that before we came here, on the other plane of existence, that I was with some friends and we were we were in this house of Mordecai, and I watched as almost everyone in my group was murdered. And instead of doing anything, I ran to save myself. Uh, so is Jarvis, depending on what Jarvis, like if he actually feels embarrassed or uh, sad about that, make a persuasion check. But if he's just like, he doesn't really care and he's just make like using this as no, an he's, excuse. He's, no, 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 he's, he's being sincere. Okay, make a persuasion check. Your, your charisma, uh, telling the story, and exposing your emotions to Mad Maggie. Fifteen. She looks at you and goes, All right. I haven't told do. anyone that story. That'll please, do. Please keep it between us. Oh. Uh, that'll cost you a little bit more but okay. I promise I have no intention of telling anyone unless it benefits me okay so your secret is safe with me as long as it doesn't benefit me to not make it safe here Except is that. your pearl and you. my wand and scroll Actually, I'd already get tech. Oh yeah, I'd already given her the wand, but here's it's the fine. scroll. Yeah. Uh, she goes. Nice doing business with you, Jarvis. You as well, and thank you. Oh, my pleasure. You leave. You head back to camp. I start skipping back to my group. The pearl in my hand. <laughs> Rollercoaster. Got it. Finally. Jesus Christ, it's about time. <laughs> I kind of wish it was I had to give up my wand thing. for it and 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 that scroll that you know you said it was worth it so wand but, and a scroll you overpaid could have just given her I don't know your childhood memories or something <laughs> Zag. I mean she also wanted those but she's very I feel like I probably deserve this after really fighting for my friends to just lay him to rest in this pyramid and she didn't really appreciate it, so I, we're we're not really on good terms right now. So I'll take what I can get. It's a bad time for a negotiation. I don't know if you're well versed in those, but uh, maybe you should let me do the negotiating. I'm I'm absolutely terrible at negotiating. That's one thing you'll learn about me. I'm. Uh, I'm let me ask terrible. you a question, then, Drock. How many arrows do you think you could get for a soul? <laughs> <laughs> How many arrows can you carry? Well. Don't even answer. A lot more than you can carry. <laughs> All right, Drock does the negotiating from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> as uh, as uh, you guys are talking, Clonk is walking to get some other tools, and he overhears you guys, and he says, "Mad Maggie hates a wizard, and I suspect hates this one," and keeps walking. <laughs> wow. Extra. We really don't like you here. No. Thanks, I mean, 
I so you, you see that pyramid over there? Yep. Yeah, that wasn't there like a week ago. The body's still smoldering on top of the pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's a story behind that pyramid if you're if you're interested in stories. Red caps so, actually have pieces of Kairos and they're like Oh well no, beating each no. other with it. Roll go. Should we go take care of that? No, no. It's just gonna piss Maggie off if we kill <laughs> any more of them. We've we've put a dent but, in her but, number before her next supply already. Should should we maybe mm, uh, feel bad listen, for Kairos? Yeah, no, I do too. But listen, Maggie has proved insanely useful down here, and she's kind of the last person I want to piss off. Yeah. So. So, Especially if we ever want to come back. Yeah, you're right. Oh. Yeah, and uh, I hear that uh, she hates you something fierce, so if you're gonna start some shit, she's gonna kill you. <clears throat> so, you know, just saying. Jerry, yeah, you guys wanna I, go get that sword? Yeah, I, that's, yeah. Yeah, you said we don't have to walk? No, we got a vehicle. We got two vehicles. Check that. No, you we have, have one. one vehicle. That's what happened to the other one? What it's other chocolate. ones? The clunks. I thought there were two. I, don't know. I was driving a separate one before. We borrowed vehicles from. Those were the ones we loaned out to go. The you didn't use your yeah. personal vehicle to go to the Hezrus. Got it. Uh, so you head, get on your war machine. You head out. The gates open. Red caps are doing exactly what they did when you entered yelling at you and throwing whatever they have handy that's not valuable at you and have a nice day throwing Kairos' body parts at us uh no uh, not not thankfully uh that would have pissed me off um didn't happen uh but you head out on the planes and lulu is directing you t to the general direction and she's being very lulu and is just like i think it's it's that way and uh, we're gonna have to cross the river again. Oh shit! They were supposed to show us where to jump it. Are we yeah, sure did. we want to jump it, or we could just pay a one of those people with a bigger boat to maybe help us? I didn't know there was people with bigger boats. I'm hoping there are. I don't know. Drock, you know any people with big boats out here? You no, seen no, any no. of that? When you were wandering? Boats, but uh, Chuck and Clonk were telling me about jumping the river. They told me where that's supposed to happen. You want to give that Where's chance? that? Well, I mean, they just, they said it's... And I described whatever they said. Uh, <laughs> Lulu goes, I'm pretty Something worried about, about that, river. but we can try it, I guess. I can fly, you can, though. Yeah, you can fly, right, Lulu? Yeah. Hey, Jarvis, you ever learn how to make people fly? Uh, yeah been practicing it how many time. people can you make fly at once uh well you got uh, a car right so you just need to make that fly you can do that uh, right? i don't i don't think it works that way it, it, it's only people that i can can make fly oh. um i can can make th three maybe that's it yeah there's more okay. than three of us I Lulu, mean... can you carry one of us? You can, right? If we're light? <sighs> yeah, maybe. Actually, I lied. I can only do two. You did I carry Jarvis one. down from the city. Yeah, I'm always nervous, though, that it, like I drop someone. or they f let go or fall? I mean, wait, wait, hold on. Can Why don't we borrow those motorcycles again? I was able to jump those really high and really far. Yeah, you want to go ask Maggie for more things? <coughs> that, that's what you want to do right now? <laughs> Yeah. Even Clunk knows that Maggie hates you. Maybe Clunk can go ask for us. There's also the possibility of just leaving your machine and crossing yourselves. And... Yeah, I'm trying to avoid that. Okay. So Who knows? You could leave it on one side of the river and maybe nothing will happen that's bad to it. I mean, no maybe. One... Have you... You've seen The Mummy, the original. How big is this river again? Assuming, right? Yeah. 
It's, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, you're on the wrong side of the river, but we got <laughs> all the horses. It's one of those situations. <laughs> yep. It's, yep. It's a, I like that movie, even though it's critically oh, panned. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm great, a fan. It's a great, terrible movie. Yeah, yeah big, big fan. Anyway. I mean, yeah, I, I only know about jumping it. I've never heard of the big... Well, uh, let's go to the jump site and just check it out at least. I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah let's go take fun. a peek. We gotta go head over the Snot River. Something of a... I'll remember as we go. That was where... So you head over there and... Uh, you see the area where you would jump and you're not quite sure if a 12,000 pound vehicle of this size <laughs> would be able to do it this would be a very speed from the, the movie speed type of jumping a bus <laughs> uh, so um, I'm not saying it's impossible I got a decent intelligent role uh, guys I, mm, I don't know about this your car is pretty big on the way there, did we see any bigger boats? If we were to, like, you know, follow the river sticks for a while, do we see any larger boats? Yeah. That look like they could carry this vehicle? Possibly. That size? Possibly. Because you also do back. see, because uh, this is like a rise, obviously, you see um, spaced out along the river, there's these... Uh, towers with chains hanging down around them uh, spaced kind of equidistant along the river uh, yeah just towers not like bridges it looked like watchtowers yeah. oh okay um, I mean, if you guys want to double back and check out one of those bigger boats see if they'd be yeah let's flag one down all right I I want one of you to make uh, a check of some kind to flag down and find uh, a Morenoloth that can take you and your vehicle across. Make, tell me which what you'd like to use. I assume it would be something you're good at. I would like to use prestidigitation to start making red sparks in the air. Okay. To get attention. All right. Anyone else want to do anything? I'm going to use uh, Minor Illusion to create... Oh, wait. Just kidding. Ignore me. While they're doing that, Dave, you start hearing the ringing again. Jer <sighs> Jerry. Uh... Guys, is he okay? He's... People have been talking to him in his head. Huh. Jerry, I'm gonna have to take uh, this guy. I don't have any sand. Uh, Jerry, it might hurt, but I might be able to stop that. Kind ooh. Of not sure. How? So, you're open to some pain. Yeah. What, what, what do you have in mind? Um. All right. Uh, brace yourself. And at that time, I'm going to, those around me hear slightly stronger whispers, and you see the horn again in just a flash as I propel a lance of psionic disruption into your mind. Um, make an intelligence saving throw, or willfully fail it, if you'd like. I want to fail it, right? Yeah, probably. If you want this to potentially work, I have no idea if it will. Just I'm, Yeah, I'll willfully fail my it. My character was honest in that. Um, I just like the descriptive words of psionic disruption. Into the psionic. <laughs> um, so on a failed save, you're going to take... 15d6. 12 <laughs> points of psychic damage. And uh, you feel a little out of it for about six seconds where you don't feel like you could properly swing things. You can move your legs, but that's pretty much all you feel capable of doing for a good six seconds after that happens. After the, the six seconds, continue. you hear the hum go. No. Ah. Oh, okay. What do you do? Did it start up again or not? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Damn it, it didn't work. Oh, sure. uh, I'm about to take this. Sorry. Hello? Good afternoon, sir. Uh, how's your day going? 
I was going well. We we're that's fantastic. We're about to cross a river. Uh, so. Listen, okay, uh, you didn't really want to know how my day was. Listen, sir, we're we are benefactors of Bell, and we are advocates for his reascension to the throne of Avernus, control this layer of hell that he once rightfully controlled, and we are raising funds of any kind uh, to support this effort. Would you be willing to donate today? Uh, no, I need to read more about this candidate first. Well, Bell is a great, a fantastic Archduke. Uh, un, just not rightfully dethroned of his title, and he just deserves to be the Archduke. Serial is a celestial. She has no business being down here, wouldn't you agree? So how how what's his name again? Bell. B E L. How do you not know Bell? Uh, I uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of new around here. Um, what has Bell done to help anybody? Oh well, he's uh, killed many demons in the Blood War and uh, sentenced many souls to eternal suffering, and uh, has the largest collection of antique soul coins uh, this side of of any layer of hell in River my sticks. opinion <laughs> in my opinion um, but yeah I'm gonna have to like research that for myself and just find out if everything you're saying is true so are yeah, you I'll... a supporter of Zariel no I'm not a supporter of any candidate right now I'm just uh do my research. All right, fine, sir. We'll call you back in a. Uh, uh, in no, a little yeah. bit. you guys don't have to call me back. Can you just send me? Oh, some we very much will call you back because we have to make sure you're uh, educated. And once you get educated, how, we'll educate you get, further. Can I get removed? Thank you very from much. Bye bye. Oh, guys, it wasn't the reverse <laughs> orphanage, but it was just freaking Bell's election committee, Bell's ascension committee. Shit, Jerry. I, I'm sorry. Uh, that would work. Who the hell is Bell? I guess it's the person who was Zeriel kicked off the throne. Oh. Interesting. All righty, then. He wants to reascend. He said he's got a ton of antique soul coins. So I don't know if we can use that in the future. Zeriel dethroned him without killing him. Hmm. I, I, from my knowledge in Celestial School, uh, Asmodeus is the ruler of the Nine Hells, so I assume he had something to do with it. Hmm. Well, right. Oh, so, while Drock here was prestidigitationing, I will stand next to him and start sacred flaming into the air also. Okay. You'll have uh, more effect. One of you roll a d20 for me. Go ahead, Brian. Seven. Okay. Yeah, you spend about half the day trying to <laughs> go up and down half of what you think is a day going up and down. It takes a long time, many hours. And you finally see this massive barge of a boat with two Morenoloths on them, similar to the one you used before and they come and beach their craft near you guys and they look down and they hold out their hands two hands so there are two hands looking for payment oh boy how much is it gonna cost sorry my cat unplugged my headset just now classic cat <laughs> two. Do, do we have a coin amount or how much is this going to cost us to get across the river you think two with two? your machine I mean we could pay that or I could get a hundred arrows <laughs> <laughs> I think we kind of need to get across this river so this, this is a better deal than a hundred arrows oh well if our master negotiator says so well I'm pretty sure it's the only deal if 
we want the car on that side. All right, I'll hand over two soul coins. Their massive, disgusting, decrepit hands take the soul coins and deposit it somewhere inside their tattered cloak, and uh, they step aside, and a ramp deploys from this barge, and you're able to drive your massive machine onto their barge. And they push you across effortlessly with just the poles, like Venetian... I always forget the name of those fuckers in Venice doing the... Gondolas? Gondolas. Jesus. And uh, they push you across effortlessly, and you're on the other side. And Lulu says, oh yeah, it's that hill over there, I think. Those trees are weird. You see those trees? What you see are wrought iron trees lining a trail that curls up to the summit of a steep hill. We had heard there was iron trees before, so that sounds like it's the right spot. Or at least I remember that from something, I don't know. And getting closer, you see their anguished knights impaled on the tree's metal branches. Their bodies are writhing in torment as bloated sturges feast on their blood and as you're driving up this trail it gets too narrow for you to take your uh, machine up any further as it curls up the steep hill Um, you see these people on these trees are just in unspeakable pain oh they're not dead oh boy are those the rough riders may uh Everyone make a perception check. The Rough Riders? I think he means Hell Riders. I know, riders. but I just... <laughs> the Rough Riders. 18? 14. We... Perception? Yeah. 7. 7. Uh, yeah, Drac, you... are pretty damn sure... You're definitely sure that those are Hell Riders who... Uh some of which most of which you don't know maybe some of the faces you recognize like in passing but um yeah uh hell riders jerry and yeah they deserve their fate <clears throat> and i just uh, still so not part of your titan forward. squad huh they're all dead got it and they're all like help as the Sturges pull more blood from them, and as you're climbing up the trail, uh, you see some of the Sturges are going to one specific person on a tree, uh, and it looks like they're depositing the blood into this person, and getting closer, this person says, oh, help me, end me, End this this cruel torture. Please help me. And sure enough, yeah, a surge comes up while he's saying that, and you guys are getting closer, and it's putting blood into this thing, into this person. Does anyone know who that is? Anyone well, recognize him? My name is Jander. Jander Sunstar. Is he also a hell rider? Make yeah, he is. Make an intelligence check, Drac. Nine. Uh, it sounds familiar. That's about all you know. Um, please, please, help me. Lulu is with him, with us, though, right? Yeah. Lulu says, uh, "Who are you? Are you? What's your deal? What? Were you with Zeriel? He's and, a coward. And Jander, Jander says, uh, "Yes." Oh. Uh, I was a part of a host of warriors who joined the angel Zeriel in her assault on the Nine Hells. After charging through the portal into Avernus, I panicked and fled back to El Terrell. I abandoned my braver comrades and sealed their fate and sealed the portal behind them. We we have no use for pussies down here, not gonna lie. How did you end up on the tree? Haruman, who 
fought with us. It was Zeriel's right hand man. This is his hill, and this is our fate. I chose to to face the sun, for I am a vampire, and I thought I should face Lathander's mercy, and when I did, I prayed, and my prayer fell on deaf ears, and my soul was condemned to the nine hells to suffer for my sins. I just figured that's what happened to all vampires. Even though vampires were real. Please take me off this... so I can... die. And you hear the other Hell Riders um, calling out to be taken off a tree just to end their suffering. Uh, Do not listen to there's like hundreds stuff. of them, right? Like there's yeah. like a ton of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is going to take forever. Listen. Um, not only is it impractical, <clears throat> it is not deserved. Please, just take me off the tree and I will get them off and we will all meet our fate. You have met your fate. She, Jander's appealing Let's to look for Haruman. you, Jerry. You're close to the top of this hill and you don't see a Haruman. Please, sir, to you, Jerry. Take me off. I've suffered enough. I can't. I don't know. I don't know, man. My my, the rest of my crew doesn't really want to help you. If unless someone recognizes you or can tell me if you're good or bad, I can't. I did a horrible really. thing, but please, please. Can you help us fight uh, Haruman if we need to fight best. him to get the sword? Yes. Yes. Hey guys, can we? We need an, just like to have an extra body in this in this battle can we just cut him down but if he gets in our way we're gonna have to kill him Lulu Lulu kind of speaks up and she says oh, it's coming back to me now yeah everything he says is true and I believe him that he regrets his actions and I think we should take him off the tree and Red is not enough. He chose his actions. He fled. He abandoned his brothers like he says himself. He has earned his fate. <clears throat> that is my vote. But I am new to this group, and I will refer to I've kind of you all say, but... I've kind of grown to trust Lulu on these things, so I think we should cut him down. I'm willing to give him a shot, but all right, Jerry. Jerry climbs up the tree and lifts him off the. It's disgusting work, as there's blood everywhere and guts, and you pull him off and he falls to the ground, and you hear buzzing from the Sturges intensify, and Jander says, "I will help you. I promise." As his skin fades to dust, and he. Floats away into nothingness. And Whoa, then, that was cool. And you hear the other impaled people say, Please, please, let us end this. We want the same fate. And the Sturges are starting to congregate as they go in to attack you. Roll Can initiative. I... This is what happens when you help people. Whew. Oh, I have an initiative bonus now. <laughs> I'm very fast. Well, this time. <laughs> I don't know what kind of sorcery you are. And every part of me hopes it's a wild magic. But I don't think it is. <laughs> uh, 25 to 20? 20. 24. 20 to 15? 16. 15 to 10? 10 to 5 8 What'd you get, Jerry? 4 <laughs> That's with advantage That's incredible <laughs> Wow, <laughs> impressive Alright 
So how many of these things are attacking us? Around 20. Whoa. Cool. Around 20. That's a lot of turns. How big are they? What are we Tiny. looking at here? Tiny, Tiny little kind of hairy massive they're massive mosquitoes but they're still tiny um they have a little proboscis for sucking the blood uh drac you're up first as these buzzing sturges come at you um how close are they bunched together and how far away are they from me just tell me what you're trying to do i'm trying to do a cone a 30 foot let me check that a 30 foot cone spell to hit as many as I can. Okay, yeah. Um, like, you think you could get more than five in a cone? Sweet. Um, I walk towards those five um, and I. Just burp. That's the only thing. <clears throat> For now, I'm just going to say I, I utter an abyssal guttural. Um, noise uh it doesn't really sound like much oh jarvis you speak abyssal so i can't even get away with that i say something in abyssal as a huge massive wave of psionic energy like expands out in front of me and just blasts however many i hit um and they need to do a dexterity saving throw okay and i'm going to fail i'm going to quicken the spell as well so it's going to be a bonus action okay take 25 points of I think it's psychic of force damage uh, they're pushed 20 feet away from me and if they can be they are knocked prone uh, they are not knocked prone and they're not pushed away because when you <laughs> do your spell they essentially go pop, 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 and just pop in the air about 8 of them pop in the air and are dead sweet and then I'm going to take my action to take the dodge action. Okay. And I'm done. Relicos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. One side relicos. Oh. The other thing that happens when my when the fight starts, uh, the oily substance gets very thick and viscous. Gross. And it, seems like it would be difficult to connect an attack. Yay! No mage armor. Don't <laughs> need it. It's, it's gross. It's gross, though. It's real gross, though. It's not pleasant. <laughs> Roller coast. Uh, there's none behind me. They're all coming from the front. They're all coming from down the hill up towards you guys. These you guys are uh -oh. near the top of the hill. I just want to get 30 feet away from them, however much I have to move to do that, and take my three shots. The last one is the special attack. They will all be sharpshooter. Okay. The first one's a nat 20. Second one is 17. And the third one's a nat 1. Nice. Nice. So the first one does... Ooh, I rolled an 8. So 16 plus 5 is... 21 plus 10, so 31 damage to the first one. Dead, very that was dead. Crit. And then 18 damage to the second. Alright. Call it a day. Cool. Lulu's turn. Lulu is going to trumpet of blasting at these things. You're going to make a constitution save. All of us? No, she's doing it at these things. You, you're fine. Uh, where the frick? There it is. Uh, they do save, but it's not going to matter. She kills five more Sturges with her Trumpet of Blasting. There seems to be about five left. Uh... Sturgis turn, five of them gonna go 
and they're going to come at well one for each of you one for Lulu too start with Jarvis one time I didn't get my mage armor up in time 12 to hit yep my AC is 12 <laughs> So you take five piercing damage as this thing attaches to your neck. Beautiful. Uh, let's see. Drac, that's a... Disadvantage. Six... Oh, right. Uh, nat 20. Uh, on the... A disadvantage? On the first one, and the second one would be a 16 to hit. My AC is 16. So okay. Good that is five piercing damage attaches to your body through the disgustingness. Rollercoas. That is a 23 to hit. Yep. What's that... the what's Rollercoas doing with these bugs chasing him? I'm not a fan. Yeah, not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Seven piercing damage roller coast attaches okay. to your body. And Jerry, that's a nat one, so not gonna hit. Lulu gets hit. That much damage. Okay. Jarvis. I'm gonna try to rip this thing off of me and throw it. Make a strength check. Sixteen. Yep. And I try to throw it at one of the uh, um, uh, iron rods. You throw it, and it regains flight and stops flying through the air. Uh, anything else? How far is it? Is it still within? Uh, does it get an opportunity to attack on me if I move, or is it far enough away? It's far, far enough away. Cool. I um, use my full thirty feet of movement to just kind of jolt that way. Okay. Deal. Jerry. I'm just gonna uh, unarm, unarm, slap it. Okay. Make a uh, make an attack. Twelve. Yep. Cool. Five damage. Dead. You got a <laughs> lot of blood on you now. And can I use movement and just go slap the one that's on uh, Jarvis? Uh, no, I use your know. action to uh, got it. do it, and it's not I've got a... Jarvis. Oh, okay. Is there another one within reach that I can slap? No, because okay. you, d you don't have an action. Um, I can. I have two two attacks. I think you have an attack. Two attacks with your weapon attack. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Uh, okay. That is that. At the top of the round, uh, you see a flaming horse coming down from the sky above you, on which rides a figure clad in very spiky infernal iron um and he looks like i believe i pulled the picture of this badass looking dude uh no i did not so i'll do it now he's got a pretty cool sword too save that Putting it in the pinned material. All right. Hey, he's fun. And he's swooping down out of the sky. Wreck. It's your turn. Um, hey, uh, Jake, uh, 
extra attack for a barbarian is are you sure it's only for weapons what does it say it just says beginning at fifth level you can attack twice instead of once whenever you take the attack action on your turn um i would say that you can't reach okay. uh jarvis's one um but that's good to know cool uh okay drac um i'm going to uh drive a disorienting spike of energy into the one that's latched onto me and mine sliver him. Okay. It's a cantrip. He needs to make an intelligence saving throw. That's not going to be good for it. It didn't make it. Ah, <laughs> oh, bummer. Uh, only two points of psychic damage. It splats. Oh, it was actually... I'm, level, I'm above level five. It's even more. I should remember to roll the right damage dice. Um... But it splats, and I'm covered in more blood. It just mixes with the oozy viscous. Gross. Um, and I look up to the creature and wait for it to continue its whatever it's doing. Uh, you, you, all of you realize that the bodies around you are saying the name Haramon. Uh, so it's a pretty good guess that that's what's coming. Rollercoast. Um, I am going to take one attack action with my claws. Okay. To on the thing that's on me. Yep. An arm is plus three, so fourteen to hit. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, I don't have that dice over there. Don't want me to do that. Three damage. Yep, it's dead. And then, how far away is Harumon? Uh. One sec. He is. Is he within 120 feet? I think that's my range. Um, Then I am going to. Oh, my range is 600. Or 150. At not disadvantage. Okay. So I'm going to use my. Because I have the same thing that he does with the extra attack. Um, So I'm going to use that attack to do a longbow attack at him. Um, Not sharpshooter, because he looks very well armored. And it's a 2. So, I'm assuming a 12 isn't going to hit him. No, no. Very much no. Alright. That is the end of my turn. Okay. Lulu's turn. And she's going to smack it with her trunk and kills it and uh, Jarvis you, there's only one left yep Jarvis just throws a firebolt at it okay make your attack uh 10 nope that's a bummer for you and me yeah, was the last one to track. Yep. Um, um and then <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go hide behind our vehicle. So guys, unless you can, uh, regarding the extra attack, it's usually with like you're making one attack with a certain weapon. Um, unless you can, I believe that's how I've how it goes. So um, you can attack twice whenever you take the attack action. So you're not dividing your action. Does that make sense? Like, you're not doing a shooting action. We'll allow that to happen for now. A shooting action and then a claw action. Those are two separate actions. Okay. So you take the attack action. You get... You attack twice. So unless you find something different, let me know. Gotcha. Um... So, like, if you attack with your maul, Jerry, you attack twice with it. If you attack... Got it. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. Jarvis, Jerry, there's one Sturge left. I run up to it, and I go... Make your attack. Thirteen. Yes, that hits. Okay. Your five five damage. Your strength yeah. is, yeah, fucking crazy. Um, yeah, it's dead. <laughs> Sturges are 
thank God, gone. All right. And. Uh, and I'm going to rage as a bonus. Okay. The bottom of the round, two massive wasps come over the side of the hill. Why did that music stop? Oh, that's why. Um, two massive hell wasps fly over the top of the hill, and uh, one of them goes to pick up Lulu, uh, and Lulu's going to try to fight it. It's a seven strength. All right, so this hell wasp is taking Lulu somewhere um, while the other one stays around and um, is looking. Is it, uh, does that, can we do an opportunity attack? Uh, you're not close enough to make an opportunity attack. All right. So, Lulu's flying, not on her own. And it is Drax's turn. Uh, is that wasp that has Lulu within 60 feet of me, or can it be if I move? Yes. Sweet. I'm going to um, suddenly confuse the wasp and make it think like it wants to do too many things at once with an id insinuation, and uh, I need him to make a wisdom saving throw at disadvantage because I'm fueling it with more chaotic energy and heightening the spell. How many uh, sorcery points do you have left after that? After that, I have two left. Okay. That's two 18s. That sucks. Agreed. Uh... I did that, so I can't do that. Well, shit. Uh, that's my turn. Okay. Relicos. I'm going to take two shots at the wasp carrying Lulu away. Okay. Uh, sharpshooter. Do it. Uh, 21 on the first hit. Is that 18 on the second? All right. Do they both hit? Uh, the 18 does not. Okay. Damn. 23 points of damage. Okay. That is all. Alright. The Hell Wasp is going to use uh, all of its movement with Lulu. And it's going to get 120 feet away from you guys. Jarvis. Is uh, the other guy, uh, Haramon, still flying in the air? Yeah, he's coming towards you guys. Does it? Okay. Um, how far away is Jerry from me? Uh, pretty close. Like, 15 feet. All right. I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to do that my next turn. I'm just going to cast Mage Armor on myself and stay behind the... Uh, vehicle you're not with the vehicle uh the vehicle is left at the bottom of the hill oh right okay down. i'm just gonna all right then i'm just gonna cast mage armor i thought i was hiding behind it my bad okay uh lulu's gonna try and break this shit lulu rolls poorly bye lulu jerry how far away is haramon at this point uh 90 feet and how far away is the uh, the wasp carrying Lulu? Nah. Um, I'm just going to take the ready action, and the action that I want to ready is I want to try to commandeer uh, the steed that that Harmon's riding. Okay. All right. So when it if it gets close to you, you're going to try to pull Harmon off. Uh, I'm just going to try to get on. Yeah. Either you're way. You're going to get I mean, on with him. I have to do. I have to say. <laughs> I have to say specifically. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to pull him off. Yeah. 
But you like you need to tell me like if you want to, well, you, you can try to get on with him without trying to pull him off. You totally can do that. I was gonna try to kill the steed. But... Oh, okay. So you want to just when it, steed gets close, you commandeer to me means that you want to take yeah, control yeah, yeah. of it, not kill it. Well, I was gonna get on it and like try to like stab it in the face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this thing's on fire, by the way. I think I mentioned that it's flaming horse. It's, it's on fire. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So this thing is swooping out of the sky, and it's gonna come for Rolicos. And it's gonna make a hooves attack on you, Rolicos. Flaming hooves. It's bearing down on you for a 20 unnatural to hit. Yes. Ooh, that's really good roll. That's 20 bludgeoning damage. <laughs> I rolled max damage on that. And 7 fire damage from the hooves. Okay. It's turn. Aramon's turn. Uh oh. It's gonna hit you, Rollercoast, because it's right near you. Okay. gonna make a terrifying command and anyone within 60 feet must make a DC something cares uh, charisma saving throw oh, can no. I try to counterspell that sure is it actually no me? it's it's not it's not a spell never mind okay it's cool. a action. second time I tried to use that I could <laughs> sorry bud it's all good uh, uh, is it against being charmed or frightened um, yes, frightened. I have advantage. I rolled a 14. Okay. Uh, what type of save was it? That's cute. I rolled a 26 and a 27. Nice. Uh, <laughs> it's a charisma. I rolled an 11. Okay. Fail. Roller coaster fail. <laughs> I rolled a 4. Jerry, fail. Uh, the three of you are frightened for one Ugh. minute. You can make the save again at the end of your turn. And it's going to make a Hellfire Lance attacks at you, Rollercoast. Okay. Three of them. Oof. 24, 16 and 12 the 12 misses so two hits yeah my ac is 16 okay that's six piercing damage plus where's my d10s damn <laughs> plural <laughs> 19 fire oh. damage Six plus nineteen? Yeah. Okay. Alright. And then the next one is also one on the piercing damage die, so six piercing damage. I am unconscious. Okay. Uh the fire damage. Doesn't matter. So that's its turn. Drac. Um 
I am our Jarvis. Well, I guess it doesn't matter for roller coasters now. Our Jarvis and Jerry within 20 feet of each other. Yes. Um, I'm going to cast Calm Emotions on the two of them. The two of you can choose to fail this. It will suppress the frightened effect for one minute. Cool. Awesome. So we're cool. no longer frightened. Um, unless I lose concentration, it is only suppressing the spell. Uh, so if I lose my concentration, you're still frightened. Yeah. Ongoing. Cool. If that effect is It's like ongoing. taking Xanax. It's like taking Xanax. <laughs> um, so I'll do that. I believe that is an action. Um... And with my bonus action, I'll say to my remaining friends, are either of you healers? <laughs> and that's all I got. <laughs> One of them was. Is on the ground. Was. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have health potions. Yeah. Rollercoast death save. Oh, that's good. Some of us have health potions. <laughs> 15 to pass. Pass. Mark it. Mark Hell wasps are long gone now. Jarvis. Is this guy still fighting from the air, correct? It's just but hovering he's... above the ground, really close to the ground, like a foot off the ground. Okay, cool. Um, then that won't be necessary. I'm going to run over to my buddy Rollercoast that is on the ground. Uh huh. And I am going to use my action to give him a health potion. Cool. Roll your health. It's uh, 2d4 it plus 2. Thank you. Ten. Roll two, two fours. Nice, dude. Lulu's going to try. I assume that's the end of your turn. That is the end of my turn. Lulu's going to try and get out of this. And she rolled a nat one. Good job, Lulu. Out of being frightened, you mean? It's, a, it's no, an action. Oh, out oh, of the, grasp. the wasp. Yeah, the wasp. It's a bonus action to take one yourself, action to give it to someone else, yeah, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. Then I'm done. Uh, Jerry, you're frightened, or you're not frightened. You're suppressed. So. Oh, I get to roll. I get to roll to break that still, don't I? Uh, yes, yes. Roll a 16. No, that doesn't do it. Fuck. <laughs> it's almost impossible for me to roll out of this. Um, no, can't be. I'd have to roll. I mean, because I'm a minus one charisma, so <laughs> there's like three, there's three out of twenty numbers. There's a ten yeah. percent chance. Two, two out of twenty numbers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Plus zero, not much better. <laughs> where is the uh, so? The horse has just kicked Rollercoast, basically, right? Kicked it, and uh, the. Haruman has poked him with Lance. Okay, can Jerry try to go run and and jump on the horse? Sure. Close enough. Make an athletics check. But what but I'm you... not going to be able to take a swing at him once I do that, right? Correct. Okay, I'm just going to take my maul and try to attack uh... the horse. No, Haruman. Okay. Haruman. Damn it. Uh, sixteen. No. So, I mean, that doesn't hit. Takes another swing. And that's a 23. Yes. Okay. Let me figure this out. It's... <sighs> 2d6 plus some bullshit. Yep. yep. And then I'm raging, so it's plus... I think it's just... Plus two melee damage. Yeah, I want strength, strength weapons. Uh, so that's uh, thirteen damage. Nice. You guys want to keep going? Or you want to call it for next week? I'm good to keep going. I'm off tomorrow, so I'm good. Yeah, I can just finish this, this uh, round. This round, yeah. okay. Or Not, you... I mean, like this, this enemy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. You want to finish the combat, though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. How are you doing, Jake? I'm good. All right. Cool. <laughs> uh, it is the nightmare steed's turn, and uh, it's gonna attack Jerry. 
Good. With hooves. I half expected it to just stomp me back into unconsciousness. To nat one on the hooves. That's it. Does turn. not hit. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't hit anything. Uh, now it's Haruman's turn. Every time you say that, I'm imagining that that bad guy from Indiana Jones 2. I think of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just cause, Saruman? Yeah. Jerry, did you make your charisma check for... Uh... Nope, don't pass. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, it's going to... Infernal command, and then it's going to says some infernal uh, bullshit about not being scared and striking down your enemies, and uh, it's very inspiring if you were under his command, but you're not. So three hellfire lance attacks goes at Jerry. Go at Jerry. <laughs> he was speaking to his lance hellfires. Yes, yes. That's a 12 on the first one, a 26 on the next one, and a 17 on the Ooh, third one. Nice. Just the 20-something hits me. Okay. I, I've rolled three ones on this D12 in a row. <laughs> That's six piercing damage plus... 20 fire damage. So, okay, I got it. Drak. All right, let's try this. Um, so I'm he's just on his horse, just kind of like... Poking you. Poking you with a very okay. long lance. Got it. And it's on fire. Got it. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mind thrust him. Do what I did to Jerry. Uh, I need an intelligence saving throw. All right. Intelligence. It's gonna fail one of these at some point, <laughs> right? Maybe. Not twenty. Nope. Not this <laughs> time. Uh, I think he still takes half damage. Yeah. But his actions aren't limited. That would have been oh, so sweet. Ten points. Oh no, t I rolled ten, so five points of psychic damage. Okay. He can do whatever he wants next turn. Is is the sword visible on him? Does he have the sword on him? There's no sword on him. Okay. Lulu sounded... I'll just give you some insight if my acting didn't confer it. Lulu sounded not 100% sure of herself when she was describing the place. Uh, and she was telling you it's a citadel, a, a floating citadel... Uh, that and you guys from the dream and from her descriptions the sword was put in the ground if you remember uh, thrust in the ground and then a massive scab or scar covered it so that could be anything like it could be under the ground it could not be here it could be somewhere else she mm -hmm. could have gotten it wrong yeah mm -hmm. Drac it's your turn Rillicose all right, I am going to stand up first mm -hmm. off. And don't forget, you have exhaustion from being knocked unconscious. Got it. And I am going to pat myself on the chest and cast protection from good and evil. Okay. Or, I guess, protection from evil, <laughs> I guess it would just be. Um, Stay away. And Help I don't... Angels. Off the top of my head, I don't know if he's an aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead. He's a fiend. He's a fiend, okay. So he has disadvantage disadvantages on attacks against me. Cool. And if I... <clears throat> since I'm frightened by him, I get advantage on saving rolls. Cool. To break it. Is he... Oh, no, that was just your effect. Never mind. When I got knocked unconscious, did that affect a break, or am I still I frightened? Yeah, I would say it's broken. Okay. You're so very frightened gets... uh, that you may die. 
but you're not. Yeah. You don't have the mechanical <laughs> effect. Got it. It's okay. So he has a disadvantage on attack rolls in this way. Okay. Anything uh, else? That'll be it. Nope. That'll be it. Beep, bop, boop. Jarvis. Jarvis is going to cast haste on Jerry. Okay. And is there anything that I can get partial cover from anywhere around me? Trees. I'm going to go hide behind a tree. Okay. All right. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Lulu's going to try to get out of it so again. Jerry, Jerry, do you need me to send you what you have, or do you know it? Lulu fails. What do you me. mean? You get plus two to your AC. Uh, you have an extra attack. Um, you get nice. your speed is doubled. Cool. Um, I'll send you the stuff. My speed would be 80 then. Yeah, please send it to him just so he doesn't have to ask you. Yeah, it's in Zoom chat. Jerry, it's your turn. Zoom chat, Zoom chat. Um, I'm just going to keep wailing on... Uh, keep wailing on Zaruman. Haruman. Yep. Haruman, Shokti Day! Oh, that one. Nope. Ah, Nat 20. Nice, that does hit. So that's... Uh, that's big for a barbarian when I get a critical, critical hit critical. yeah something like that so features and traits uh, get an extra damage die I believe yeah that's right yeah so I get 3d6 on this one so one double nice. the, double the 3d6 nice you double yeah. the first two not the third you don't brutal double critical. the uh, brutal critical you, no you I just get the extra crit you just oh. get the extra die and then you double the first two I would have given it to him. Still uh, 26 nice. uh, damage on that nice. hit, and then I still have another attack left. Yep. Ooh, uh, what is that? 18? Nope. Damn it. All right. Anything else? Nope. The horse is going to hook you. Mm -hmm. Horse hooves. Coming at you. It does not behoove me. Did you roll <laughs> your thing too? Yeah, roll. Wait, didn't you haven't? Yeah, you, you haven't you, broken it yet. You haven't broken it yet. Roll oh your shit! I was Christmas supposed to roll save. mine too. I rolled an eighteen. Yeah, works. Okay, cool. I do not break it. Okay. Uh, hooves. Uh, twelve to hit doesn't hit. Nope. Gonna get a infernal command and three hellfire lance attacks. A nat twenty and a twelve to hit. Uh, twelve does not hit. And a twenty-four on the third one. So let's do yes. the nat twenty. Fifteen piercing damage and. 34 fire damage. So, 49 total? Sure. I didn't do the math. I'm, yeah, sure. So I'm, I'm rounding down to 24. What yeah, is it? You round uh, down. Yeah. And then, having that? Yes. And then the third one is eight piercing damage. That was just one? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> How are we? That was a crit. That was a crit. You though. added your you added your plus two to your AC, right? Oh, I didn't know. Uh... It was a nat twenty. Oh, that, yeah. that auto hits. I didn't realize. I thought there was a second one too. The third one was a twenty-four to hit. Oh Jesus. Uh, it's twenty-two fire damage, plus eight piercing for the third one, so fifteen. <laughs> yeah, Jerry just took like 80 something cumulative damage. <laughs> He's still standing. Drac. I'm so glad I picked it was all half, wasn't it? <laughs> right, um, I'm going how would you how do you get through this game without something <laughs> like that? 
You get knocked uh, unconscious a lot, like I do. Knocked unconscious a lot. <laughs> I run under the horse and I release a psionic blast at both the horse and Harbon, hoping to maybe knock him off the horse. That'd be neat. Um, so it's a deck save for each of them. Okay. Yeah, does he have advantage because he's on a horse? <laughs> Anything, I'd say he has disadvantage because he's on a horse. Um, I just figured he was up higher or something. I don't know. 22 deck save for Haruman and the horse is a 13. The horse fails. Um, <clears throat> so I don't knock Haruman off, but I push the horse 20 feet away. Cool. Uh, <laughs> I assume it's flying, so it can't be knocked prone. Right. Um, so that's 20 points of force damage total. So 20 to the horse, 10 to Haruman. Okay. And the horse is pushed back 20 feet. Do I get an opportunity attack because he got pushed away from me? No. Because it is forced movement, it does not provoke opportunity attacks. That's what I figured. That's how that works. That Just would looking be, for any, any Dave, little Dave, edge. Dave, that would be yeah. milked by players so often. <laughs> just push him so I can get a... It would just be... <laughs> All right, Relicos. Okay, so he's 20 feet away from me now? Did yeah. you get pushed? Yeah. I am going to back up another 20 feet. Okay. Put my party between me and it. And then I am going to use my War Priest ability to gain an extra bonus action attack. Okay. And take three regular shots at him. Okay. Non-sharpshooter. Non-sharpshooter. 17. Nope. Uh, 20, not natural. Yes. And 27. Yes, two hit. Uh, so that's 8 so they, damage. 19 or 20. So 16 total damage between the two hits. Okay. He's that looking bloodied. That's all for me. Jarvis. Um, Jarvis is going to cast Blight on him. Okay. And that's a con save 15. Yikes, that's, he's got good con. <laughs> Did you nat 20? Nat 1, sir. Oh, thank so God. So that's a 9 con. Thank God. This, you may have just made the, uh, that roll may have just saved you. 38 damage. Okay. Nice rolls. Jerry. I'm up again. Do I still have haste? Yes. All right. Just wailing away on, is he, did he, did he come back and land or is he still pushed? He's 20 feet away from you. But up in the air. Yeah. Like okay. you, uh, like he's you can get to him. He was pushed uh, laterally. Wait, you were pushed up, right? Well, you, I you... didn't get underneath him. I was just like angled. Oh, okay. I'll say. So yeah, I just I'll, I'll I run over to him and I wail away on him then. Twenty. Yes. Uh, unnatural. Ooh, God, nice damage. Uh, seventeen damage. Yeah, you, how do you kill him? Ooh, nice. Very nice. I uh I like take my I take my boot and I <laughs> Well, I guess I'm using I'm never mind. I'm using, using my your mall. Malt. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to like hoof him. I get it. Uh, uh, Barry does a bicycle kick. Ten yeah. feet. Your damage will be the... much lower, though. I'm gonna. Is so. Is he wearing one of those? Um, is he wearing one of those helmets with like just like a like a mouth guard? I mean, you saw the picture I posted in. Oh. Yeah, he's wearing a mouth guard. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I, I just like it. Just dents that in so hard that, like, the bottom of that like chops his head in two. And then his his face just kind of like comes out of the the uh, mouth guard. His face does come out of the mouth guard, and then as he's dying, all of his armor just kind of crinkles and crumples up 
into a ball and falls motionless and his horse uh, r raises up in the air and starts running into the ethereal plane and disappears. Oh, man. Could have tried to talk to the horse. With my beast, beast sense. Nice, guys. He was about to heal himself for 100 points. <laughs> so glad Ooh. I blighted his ass. Ooh. That if you rough. guys wouldn't have done some quick damage on that last round, uh, that would have... He would have been Lord. back to almost 100%. Yeah, that could have been, that could have been trouble. Nice work. Yeah, Jerry is hurting. Smoked. Rollercoaster yep. is at what, 10 hit points? Yep. <laughs> because that's as much as I healed him for. And you're With how down much damage? Lulu. Yeah, and we, we are. Lost Lulu, guys. That's not great. Oops. I was very close to getting to casting fly on instead of haste, but I wasn't quick enough. Yeah, okay. I feel like we need it's to be befriend another yeah. NPC uh, <laughs> or <Holophant>. two. <laughs> um, Just for more bodies. <laughs> in the market for more holophants. Excellent, guys. We'll uh, be back next week, 7 p.m. Pacific, twitch.tv slash venture ventures on Monday. Uh, if you guys don't have anything to plug, I will plug something. I will plug our finale for Season 1 of the Star Wars Fate Accelerated game I play in on Saturdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern, on twitch.tv slash rollforchange, where we raise money for good causes like the ACLU, and we've met our goal this quarter, so that's good. And, uh, yeah. Huzzah. If you're into Star Wars... Uh, come watch that. Uh, it's a fun time. Other than that, guys, nothing? No? Okay. I've got, uh, if you, if anybody wants to come watch me play Path of Exile or a number of other video games I play, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash IHC the Raws. IHC the Raws. Got it. Uh, Cool. Without further ado, be excellent to others and be excellent to yourself. Stay safe out there. Stay more than six feet away from each other so we can not get sick, all of us, including... But when I sneeze, I don't get it all over you. Don't vulnerable. give COVID an opportunity attack. Yes, nice, <laughs> nice. Good job, Dave. That's <laughs> Inspiration great. for the next session. That's fucking great. Not quite, but it's just great. <laughs> I tried, Dave, I tried. This is great. <laughs> Nice. Well, that's a perfect way to end it. We'll see you guys later.